Then we have Joseph Kosuth. Now, he's one of the originators of conceptual art in the mid-1960s. He's kind of taking the role in conceptual art that we see Frank Stella taking when it comes to minimalism, that we see people like Still and Pollock taking in abstract expressionism. Now, he'll pioneer the use of words in place of visual imagery of any kind and explores the relationship between the ideas and the images and the words used to convey them. His series of one in three installations in 1965 in which he assembled an object, a photo of that object, and an enlarged photographic copy of the definition of it explores this relationship directly and really gets at a lot of these ideas of conceptual art. After all, this isn't really something that you're going to buy and put in your home. Rather, this is giving you a statement. His enlarged images of dictionary definitions in his series eliminated objects and images completely in order to focus on the meaning conveyed by language. So he'll go one step further and go to dealing with simply words. And in doing so, he's simplifying his ideas, and yet he's still creating that discussion, that key to conceptual art. Since the 1970s, he's made numerous site-specific installations that continue to explore how we experience, comprehend, and respond to language. He's really interested in how we use words, why we use certain words, what are the limits of language. Or, on the other hand, is language actually a better way of explaining our ideas than anything else that's available to us? And he creates this, one in three chairs. Now, in one in three chairs, we see represented one chair uh, in three different ways, as a manufactured chair, an actual three-dimensional chair, as a photograph and a copy of a dictionary entry for the word chair. So we see an image, an object, and words. Now, obviously, Kusath does not make the chair. He does not take the photograph. He does not write the definition. He simply selected and assembled them together. So there's really no time from him. Rather, he's coming up with the conception and allowing others, experts, etc., to create the rest. He's the one coming up with an idea. And this is almost artists becoming intellectual, moving away from that craftsman sort of view of artists where you know, they're in the studio painting or sculpting or whatever else and, and making them an intellectual, putting them on the level with philo modern day philosophers or authors. And what he's asking you to do is really look at it starting with one question. Is it art? And second question, which version of the chair is the most accurate? These open-ended questions are exactly what he wants us to think about. So, we're kind of looking at this going, okay, which one is really a chair? Which one captures what Kusuth would refer to as chairness? Now, the obvious answer is, well, duh, the chair. But how many of you can really describe the use and function of a chair? Just try it now. Sit there and think about how would you describe, how would you define a chair? Does it have to have four legs? Can it have three? Can it have six? Does it have to have a flat back or can it curve? Does it even have to have a back? Is a stool a chair? Can a rock be a chair? So you see where we start getting into issues. Is this chair really the best representation of the chair? But then what about the definition? Maybe for some people, the definition is the better alternative. Imagine if you're blind, for example, and you're trying to figure out what a chair is. The use of language of that definition is going to be far more useful to you than looking at a chair. After all, you can't see it. And what about the photograph of the chair? So maybe the photograph of the chair is more of a chair than the chair itself. Because the photograph requires us to sort of change it from 
its two-dimensional reality, obviously photographs are two-dimensional, into three dimensions. And in doing so, maybe we start to understand the concept of what a chair is more than if that information is handed to us in the form of an actual chair. So there's a lot of issues going around here. It's all about the discussion. So by assembling these three alternative representations, he turns a simple wooden chair into an object of debate, even an object of consternation, a platform for exploring new ideas and new meanings. You keep going down the rabbit hole, you kind of don't know where you're going to end up. And he goes down the rabbit hole because this is what happens. So we see the original chair picture and definition in the middle, but then he takes a picture of the installation, puts it on the left, and takes a description of the installation and puts it on the right. So now which one's more real? Which one is a better description of not just the chair, but the installation? He's kind of become meta here. And then he goes one step further, takes a picture of that, of the installation and the explanation of the installation, and puts that up. So we get another level, another photo with the expanded installation. On the other side, we have a longer description of what the installation is because obviously Kusuth has just added to it. So you see where he starts trying to get us to think and there are layers. It's like an intellectual onion that needs to be peeled back. And again, there's nothing here that someone's going to want to buy necessarily. I'm not going to buy it and put it in my home. I might buy it because I'm a museum and I want it to show. But this is art minus the artisan. This is art with the artist acting as philosopher or the artist as intellectual.